Good evening and welcome to Tinkering with Atkelar. Finally, it is time. Camera restoration time, that is. I got my paws on an old 35mm camera that was in need of some TLC. The model is a Practica FX2, a second generation SLR introduced by a company from Eastern Germany in 1956. It features a top-down viewfinder, no pentaprism, including a pop-out lens and a look-through viewfinder, or viewguesser, as an alternative. The lens mount is a 42mm screw-on type that includes a trigger mechanism to close the aperture. For exposure control, the camera features various times in a pretty weird way. The top knob selects red or black times and the bottom knob selects a pair of red and black values. The range is from one half second to one five hundredth of a second and includes a B setting to do longer exposures manually. The winding mechanism will allow film advance for one frame only and also will count the number of frames. Pretty nifty! For a shutter, the camera has two curtains that run horizontally. This enables the rather low exposure times. The closing curtain will follow the opening one within the frame, resulting in a rolling shutter. <laughs> and you kids thought that was a DSLR thing. All of this is achieved 100% mechanically. The camera has no battery. The only wiring is for the flash contacts. Oh boy, this is going to be an interesting one. I recall how complicated the aperture assembly was from my last camera restoration and this lens has several groups that need fine adjustments even. Hmm, better keep these parts together, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with them anyway. Clean and smooth. But I did take apart the rest of the lens just to clean out all the old dust. After the lens, I started with the camera body. Most of the parts came off simple enough. The lens mount. The viewfinder, the bottom portion had no visible screws, but after feeling around for a bit, I was sure that they were glued shut under the black coating. Well, I wanted to remove that anyway, since it was coming off in places and I saw lots of green stuff underneath. Yuck! I ran into a problem with the speed selection knob. The top unscrewed just fine, but the lower part wouldn't budge. I didn't want to use force, so I did some digging in online media to finally read left-handed thread. Oh, okay, well, that was simple enough. After an hour of poking and prodding, with the knob gone, the top cover finally came off to reveal all the gears and levers inside. Yes, this is going to be interesting! The underside had some interesting parts of the timing mechanism. There is a clockwork type of device to slow down some gear movement for the longer exposure times. When you put the red-black selection into the long time position, it engages a break for the second shutter curtain, the short time position just bypasses that. So that's why they used this weird two-part timing selector. Here I also found out what drives the entire gizmo. The shutter curtains. They are wound on pins with springs 
and that's what drives the exposure timer. Carefully unwinding those was important. They came with quite some tension. The mirror assembly was also riveted. I'll leave that alone. But the mirror itself was just screwed in. After getting everything out, I looked at the sad pile of sand and dust that had accumulated on my bench. Wow, it even had some pine needles. No wonder the timer was all over the place. All the parts, except for the shutter curtain, which is a fabric of sorts, went into the ultrasonic cleaner. After drying them off, I decided to do some knolling. Not the prettiest arrangement, but it certainly helped. Um, deep breath, reassembly begins. The leg gears connected to the hip axle or so. A good thing I made lots of pictures and video to look back. Every use case had its own particular screw size and shape.
During assembly, one of the tiny E clips broke off. Ah, f why? <sighs> well, I recall having a grab bag of them in my stash. Let's see. Hmm, nope. Slightly too big. Oh, that one might do. Phew, crisis averted. The viewfinder took a bit more work. Naturally, I wanted to know how in focus my images would be. So I had to make sure that what the lens projects to the film matches what's visible on the focusing screen. I used some plastic wrap as a film substitute again, focusing on a target to verify that the lens distance markers make sense. Then I flipped down the mirror and adjusted the focusing screen to match. This had to be done in semi-darkness, so there is no video of it. Sorry. Quite a bit later, I finally had all the parts together again. Winding up the shutter and giving it a try. Hmm, it's acting up. The closing curtain runs at the same time as the opening one, and in B mode, it just opens and doesn't close. And so the troubleshooting began. It took some trial and error to get everything aligned again, 
but every speed setting is at least plausible now. The next thing to do, put some film in it and give it a try. After closing all the covers, I had to find something to replace that black grip material. I decided to use some black vinyl for now. If anybody watching knows where to get the proper grip material, please let me know. I'd like some sheets to cut, because I have other devices that need some replacements as well. I think I succeeded! It does make nice pictures including ones with an external flash. And that concludes this edition of Tinkering with Edkelar. I hope you enjoyed joining in. See you next time!